What if I were to tell you that your children's children's children may one day live in a toxic environment where there's not enough fresh drinking water, not enough food, and the weather threatens their lives daily? What if I tell you that your children's children's children will only be able to see the broad range of animals living today in textbooks? What if I tell you that this future is not only possible, but happening to children all across the globe right now? This is exactly what I'm telling you. The Anthropocene is a term coined around the year 2000 to describe the current time period in which we live. Anthrop Anthropocene, yeah. Anthropocene comes from two Greek words, anthropa, which means human, and scene, which means new. The proposed term would cover the period in which humans have directly affected the global environment. Though arguments could be made about when this age of human interference with the global ecosystem began, there is no argument that human intervention has vastly affected every ecosystem on our planet. Earth has entered, or soon will enter, the sixth mass extinction of multicellular life. One of the leading causes of this mass extinction is humans' overuse of what is called the global net primary production which is shortened to NPP. This is the total energy budget of our planet. Right now we are using 27% of the NPP. This number is not expected to decrease, but will only increase as more and more humans populate the Earth. And through the entire history of the world, the higher the use of the NPP, the more multicellular plants and animals become extinct. During the past three centuries, during the past three centuries, the human population has increased tenfold to more than six billion and is expected to reach ten billion in this century. About thirty to fifty percent of the planet's land surface is currently explored by humans. Tropical rainforests disappear at a fast pace, releasing carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, and strongly increasing species extinction. Cattle populations, which release methane and other greenhouse gas, have reached 1.4 billion. Energy use has grown 16 fold fold during the 20th century, causing 160 million tons of atmospheric sulfur dioxide to be released per year. So far, these effects have largely been caused by only 25% of the world population. These unnatural emissions cause acid rain, photochemical smog, and climate warming. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Earth will warm 1.4 to 5.8 degrees Celsius during this century which is 2.4 degrees, or 2.5 to 10.4 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is already causing serious disturbances in the flow of winds, currents, and annual storms, and will only get much worse. There is already a water crisis in much of the world today. According to Wikipedia, uh, there is inadequate access to safe drinking water for 884 million people. Inadequate access to water for sanitation and waste disposal for 2.5 billion people. And groundwater overdrafting, which is the uh, excessive use of, or overuse of the groundwater, is diminishing agricultural yields. And the overuse and pollution of water resources is harming the biodiversity, and the regional conflicts over scarce water resources have already caused warfare and bloodshed. Waterborne diseases and the absence of sanitary domestic water are one of the leading causes of death worldwide. For children under the age of five, waterborne diseases are the leading cause of death. At any given time, half the world's hospital beds are occupied by patients suffering from waterborne diseases. According to the World Bank, 88% of all waterborne diseases are caused by unsafe drinking water, inadequate sanitation, and poor hygiene. As our population grows, so will our use of the net primary production. In the simple act of trying to feed everyone, we are already destroying the biodiversity of life, introducing toxic chemicals into the atmosphere, oceans, and wildlife, and it will only get worse as our population grows. Eventually, there will not be enough net primary production left on our planet sustain our human population, and we will be headed toward an exponential decline. Many people will die, as many people are already dying. The world is not without hope. Every problem that has been caused by us 
can also be reversed by us. However, like everything broken, repairing and reversing the damage is always much more difficult. There is no simple answer to our current dilemma. There is no am simple answer for any of this. Our only true chance at survival in the future is group effort, effort on behalf of every human body on this planet. Everyone must know about the Anthropocene and what it holds for the future. Everyone must understand that human activity is the cause of the coming storm and that human activity is the only solution. We need more engineers and scientists studying the problems and finding solutions for the Anthropocene. We need more teachers educating students on the Anthropocene. We need more research and more information. We need popular programs in the media and articles to address the issue. We need everyday people putting in just a little bit of effort every day to keep informed and to keep our government focusing on the problem, problems that matter most, which is the future sustainability of our planet. What kind of legacy will we leave our children? Will we, will, we leave, will we leave a planet that we have destroyed or a planet that we have saved? 